Hello there, my fellow battle brothers, and welcome to your now weekly video of a rather less known chapter of the Adeptus Astartes. In this episode, we are going to be talking about another successor of the Ultramarines, namely the Eagle Warriors chapter. Before I begin, I would like to both let you know and make it clear that I have no kind of bias when picking these obscure chapters especially when it comes to their parent legion. So, if I do three Ultramarines successor in a row, for example, it is not because I have a hard-on for Ultramarines, but because those chapters fit my time and script requirements whenever I made them. However, I will do my best to make them as varied as possible. That being said, I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about the Eagle Warriors, shall we? The Eagle Warriors is a fleet-based second founding successor chapter of the Ultramarines. Since they are a fleet-based chapter with no permanent homeworld on which to build its fortress monastery, it is continually on campaign to defend those star systems originally conquered by Robut Gilliman during the Great Crusade. Within the Mythos Angelica Mortis, the great work concerning the space marines of the latter part of the 37th millennium, the Eagle Warriors are listed as the immediate forebears of the marines errant. Although why they are singled out for the honor of a named founding, namely the 23rd founding, at the time remains lost to history. The origins of the Eagle Warriors chapter can be traced back to the Great Crusade over 10 millennia ago, when it was still part of the Ultramarines Legion, known then as the 13th. This was before its reunion with the Primarch Robut Gilliman. Following the unification with its Primarch, Gilliman quickly set about restructuring the Legion's operational doctrine and hierarchy to better suit his needs. While this new doctrine of so-called structured adaptability became quickly ingrained within many of the Legion's chapters, some few individual chapters, through long-held tradition or other quirks, maintained a considerable resource of non-standard equipment or personnel. Another interesting example of this, apart from the Aurora chapter which we already talked about, was the 20th chapter, known within the Legion as the Eagles. These guys were pretty much experts on void combat. During the Kalf conjunction, they were assigned to security duty among orbital platforms and docked warships in Kalf's local orbit. Thus, they witnessed the full fires of betrayal committed by the assholish Wordbearers Legion during the Battle of Kalf. Following the end of the Horus Heresy, Robut Gilliman was responsible for restructuring the Imperium's military. What was left of the Loyalist Space Marine Legions would now be broken into smaller and more manageable formations, known as chapters. When the second founding of the Space Marines was decreed, seven years after the end of the Horus Heresy, the most devastated Loyalist Legions divided into fewer than five successor chapters. However, the ones who have survived more or less intact, like the Dark Angels or the Ultramarines, were divided many times more. The existing Void Veteran formations of the Ultramarine's 20th chapter became a part of the newly founded Eagle Warriors chapter. Several notable campaigns the Eagle Warriors took part in include Peril on Zucron Captain Nikon and the second company of the Eagle Warriors vanished under mysterious circumstances while answering a planetary distress call from the planet Zucron in the Jericho Reach. Reconquest of the Zypher Subsector For almost three centuries, the Orc Empire of Wa Arbuts ruled the Zypher Subsector and was left unmolested until a campaign of reconquest was finally begun in the 3rd century of the 41st millennium. The reconquest was led by the forces of the Raven Guard, the Marauders, the Eagle Warriors, and Revilers Space Marine Chapters, supported by two dozen Imperial Guard regiments. 
In a long and hard-fought campaign, these forces battled to reclaim the planets lost to Warlord Arbuts. Until finally, in 224 of M41, the Zypher subsector was declared free of the taint of the orcs. Ambush at Baylor Secundus A strike force from the Eagle Warrior's 7th Company was ambushed during operations against feral orcs in the central lowlands of the world of Baylor's primary continent. The only survivor was veteran sergeant Nazahan, who was later entombed within the armored sarcophagus of a rare contemptor pattern dreadnought. The Defense of Hythe Space Marines of the Eagle Warriors chapter answered a distress call from the city of Hythe, shortly before all communications were smothered by a splinter Hive fleet of the Tyranids. Though unable to reach the city itself to prepare a proper defense, they deployed on the plane before it in the path of the ravening swarms to unleash the full firepower of their storm ravens, centurion squads, and dreadnoughts. The efforts of the eagle warriors held back an incessant tide of gene stealers, and the devastator centurions eliminated the more severe threats of haruspexes and harpies before they were able to cause the devastation expected of them. After many weeks, victory was finally secured preventing Hive and the planet from succumbing to the Hive fleet. The Fall of Medusa V The Fall of Medusa V was a multi-sided military conflict fought on the Imperial mining world of Medusa V in the Ultima Segmentum. This was ultimately devoured by a warp storm at the end of the 41st millennium, but thankfully the population was evacuated. The fourth company of the Eagle Warriors was present and earned great renown during this campaign. The Zeist Campaign This was a military conflict fought between the Imperium and the Tau Empire, in the Zeist sector of the Ultima Segmentum. After a long and bloody conflict involving several chapters of the Space Marines, the Tau were finally beaten and sent back reeling. The Tau expansion slowed and then stopped under the Imperial assaults. Eventually, only the world of Augura in the Zeist sector remained in Tau hands, as their only logistical and repair source in the area. Space Marines from the Nightwatch, Halo Dragons, Silver Skulls, Sable Swords, Crimson Fists, Iron Lords, Aurora Chapter, Knights of the Raven, Ultramarines, and of course, the Eagle Warriors, namely a large force of Terminators, participated in the assault on Augura. Despite the Tau's advanced weapons and technology, they were unable to stand against the combined force of so many Astartes. A few notable Eagle Warriors include Captain Nikon Pelagius Long ago in the 31st millennium, Nikon Pelagius was the captain of the second company of the newly formed Eagle Warriors chapter. He was a lauded victor of the Battle of Namolas, which had seen the Ultramarines Legion snatch victory from the jaws of defeat through a daring assault led by Captain Nikon. While he survived, 100 of his battle brothers had not, a bloody toll for which Pelagius never truly forgave himself. As an ostentatious sign of his grief, he underwent ritual scarring for each of the slain eagle warriors, refusing to have his cell cleaned afterwards. The bloodstains were to be a permanent reminder of his perceived failure. Respected by his men, Nikon Pelagius was nevertheless a warrior, and was known throughout the chapter as commander of the Ayaxis, his personal honor guard. Like the rest of the second company, Captain Nikon vanished under mysterious circumstances in the year 21 of the 31st millennium, while answering a planetary distress call from the planet Zucron. Apothecary Hilarion This was the second company's apothecary and member of the Ayaxis. Sergeant Erastos Leader of squad Ayaxis and Captain Nikon's personal bodyguard. Acacius another member of the Ayaxis, and another bodyguard of Captain Nikon's. Lygia, second company standard bearer and member of the Ayaxis. Galenos, heavy weapon specialist of the Ayaxis, usually armed with a heavy bolter. 
One of the most sacred relics of the Eagle Warriors is called the Pinions of Ascanius. The Pinions of Ascanius are a custom-crafted artificer pauldrons and vambraces that can be fitted onto a suit of Astartes power armor. Ascanius of the Eagle Warriors was seconded to the Death Watch in the Jericho Reach in the mid-37th millennium, where he developed a reputation for swordsmanship without equal. His armor, custom-fitted to his enormous frame, was the subject of numerous upgrades to enhance the grace and power of his strokes. Eventually, the masters of the forge themselves were at a loss to explain the modifications in full. After his death, they found they could not refit the full armor to accommodate another wearer, and were forced to dismantle it. However, they took great care to preserve the pauldrons and vambraces that had encased his arms. They can now offer another Astartes who incorporates them into his own armor unprecedented dexterity in close combat. The Eagle Warriors wear a unique halved heraldry of blue on the right and white on the left of their power armor. The white squad specialty symbol on the right shoulder guard designates operational specialty. A black Roman numeral is stenciled on the center of the squad specialty symbol, which indicates squad number. The color on the left knee guard indicates company number in accordance with the Codex Astartes. The right knee guard often bears honorifics, such as an iron halo marking or an imperial laurel. The Eagle Warriors chapter badge consists of a blue eagle's wing, displayed and elevated, centered upon a field of white. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Eagle Warriors chapter of Astartes for today. Would you like to be a battle brother of this chapter? Let me know in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing for more content. I thank you kindly for watching, and I wish you all a peaceful day. The Emperor Protects.